Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the weekly Monday Motivation Podcast. No more excuses. I am your host, Sandy Ballard, the badass business coach. Thanks for being here. And as always, thanks for sharing the podcast with others. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram or my Growing Forward Facebook page. Because, you know, I like to know who's following me. So message me, make a comment. This is where you share all your comments and things. Because through the week, I continue the theme with extra challenges, articles, comments, posts, things like that. So would love to have you connect with me on social media. You, LinkedIn as well there too. So yes, all right. Well, last Monday's podcast was about setting up your 30-day and second quarter goals and then figuring out what you need that can, to help you to achieve that. So did you set yours up? Did you figure out what can help you? achieve them. All right. If so, then you need to share them, right? Share them with me. Tell the world, share the world, share it with the world, because then you've said it out loud and you're more apt to make, figure out, make a plan and achieve them, right? And as I mentioned, I love it when clients are aggressive with their goals, but my job is to make sure they don't bite off more than they can chew. Like uh, the new one I have that said, I have no plan B. This business cannot and will not fail. I love it. He broke up with his business partner and has no sales or marketing person. It's just him right now. And what he needs help with is a salesperson. Ironically, after we met, he followed up with a couple of people he had met at the same networking event and that we met at. And they are interested in including his products in their portfolio and presenting them to their clients. You know, it's not a dedicated full-time salesperson, but it's a start and a damn good one. What about you? I mentioned that my April goal is to make big progress on my fourth book. And the help I need is to, to achieve that goal is doing work sprints. I've already done one and I have more scheduled. And basically, if you're not familiar with that or haven't heard me talk about that before, is it's about a 90-minute window that I schedule on there, I block it out so no one can schedule over it. And when that comes on and the reminder, you know, goes off and says, hey, work sprint, then I shut off all my notifications and I work for 90 minutes. And for those this month, for for those work sprints, it's specifically to write my book. So try it. It works great. And no one can bug me. And if, if the man candy is here working, I'm like, dude, 90 minutes. Don't talk to me. (laughs) It works. I'm telling you, you've got to try it sometime. All right. And my next full second quarter goals are to professionally um, is to have my book into editing and personally to get back into pre-vid shape. Yes. Living where we do now is helping as we have a dedicated gym in our complex. I'm tracking my workouts again. And I, because I realized the reason I have well, besides knee surgery and sciatica and back issues, um, I haven't been doing as aggressive of workouts as I used to back in Indiana. So I've kicked those up a notch. It's easy to just go to the, the beach or the pool and sit, right? But during COVID, our gym was closed and there was no true weight training. I just ran or rode my bike or walked. And I also found this app. No, I'm not having an affiliate shit set up. I probably should, but it's called Asana Rebel. A-S-A-N-A, and then the next rebel is R-E-B-E-L. It was like 30 bucks for the year, and it has great, all different, it's yoga-based. It has great workouts. The workouts are five to, I think one is even four minutes. It's just a stretching one to get help you get up and stretch. Five to like 30 minutes. And I can squeeze those in anywhere on the days that I especially have a lot to do or start early um, or have just long uh, back-to-back meetings. So, you know, something like that can help. And it's just sometimes just getting up and stretching is great. So, again, what about you? You know, and then there's the aggressive part that I I want to, to talk about and warn you about. There's that fine line between pushing and overdoing it. Much like working out, right? You know, what I don't want you to do is get overwhelmed, burned out, and quit. Because if you don't quit on me, I won't quit on you. Deal? right? But we got to get started. I, I need you to step up and lean in and be a little aggressive, just not bite off more than you can chew. Spring is here. 
and there's no time to waste. And there's ways to kick ass, be aggressive, and not get overwhelmed. Yes, you've heard me preach about this many, many, many times, but if you're not doing it or doing it well, then it can, it can hurt you. And it's prioritizing. Yes, I have a client who's been doing, doing pretty well. We just started working together a couple months ago. However, she's still feeling a little unorganized and admitted that, yeah, she's still procrastinating. We've discussed how she keeps track of her time and the things we've worked on and how she keeps track of everything. And until recently, after we started working together, she's been doing my least favorite thing, which is keeping it all in her head. All her to-do list is in her head, which is what? I call it the oh shit list. Because as you remember things, you say oh shit, or at least I do. <laughs> she's tried a few apps, a few ways to make a list, and then did what I just talked about earlier, overwhelmed. She got overwhelmed. She tried to do too much, and she tried to schedule her to-dos. So basically, it was like back-to-back-to-back tasks, and so she was always getting notifications, and it stressed her out. So the last thing we talked about, she decided to write everything down on one big list. Fantastic. That is great. I like it. You know, at least it's not in her head anymore, right? However, she's still procrastinating on certain things. So we talked about why, when, what, which things she's procrastinating on and why. She's picking and choosing on the list what she wants to do, likes to do, which we've all done, right? And as I expected, she's not prioritizing. She's not looking at what's due first or most important. She's just doing what she wants to do. And she's loving crossing the things off the list. But... She's still keeping the priorities in her head. No, you can't do that. As you can imagine, her, her latest quote-unquote homework assignment from me is to prioritize her list. You know, we'll meet in a few weeks to discuss how that's worked for her. But the one thing I did appreciate is she's using a wall calendar. Yes, she laughed. She goes, it's April. I had to tear off January, February, and March. But she's writing things down now for the whole month that aren't necessarily things that will go on, on her to-do list. Like appointments, date nights, which I love. Her work schedule, she's not a traditional nine to fiver. She's still in school. And she can glance at that and see what's coming up. And if she needs to add anything that's coming up, that's an appointment or things like that, a meeting to her that's related to her to do list. And I'm so proud of her. And yes, even though she still has some work to do, she's made huge strides. And she's walking for about 30 minutes a couple times a week. And of course, I challenged her to make it three. So prioritizing is such a huge thing for people. And I'm excited to hear how it works for her. You know, I've even caught myself doing the fun stuff or easier stuff first or scrolling social media or taking a walk break to avoid doing something less interesting or tedious like paying bills or something more time consuming like these podcasts and setting up my marketing plan. You know, my client found herself taking longer breaks than she thought she would or initially wanted to, but it was to avoid studying for an exam for a class she doesn't like. Yes, avoidance. We all do it. So this week, I'm going to challenge all of you to prioritize and share how it goes. You may think you do, but are you really? Are you really? That's what, are you really? You have mentioned before, but what I do is I write everything down on one huge list like my client actually just did. And then I put a post-it note on top of that list and write the top three things I must get done in order today before I can do anything else on that list. And then if stuff gets um, comes up or I'm talking to a client or I need to add something else, I just add it to my list and then I reprioritize. So just try it, you know. I, that way I can tell if I'm avoiding things and that's how I hold myself accountable and I, you can too, right? Try it or just maybe just number things right in order or add to your calendar each day a note or a task that says what three things you'll do today in order. You know, must prioritize to see, you know, based on what's due first, what's most important. Yes, if you're if you have a traditional job and a boss, what are they yelling about? And the pushback I've gotten from that is going to your boss and saying, okay. I, I, you just gave me these things to do, but I still have over here those things. 
what's prioritized. Pri- yeah, what's priority? Just ask them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it because sometimes they're so busy they don't realize what they've given you. Especially if you have p- other people, multiple people giving you projects. All right. So make sure you're prioritizing. Ask to have the help prioritizing if you're not in control of your list, and see how it goes. I'd love for you to share, make a comment, like I said, right here, or email me at sandy at sandyballard.com. Remember, Sandy has an I, so sandy at sandyballard.com. Don't forget to check out my my website, badassbusiness.coach. Schedule a free 30-minute consult if you need help just talking through things or want more information on how, on the best way to prioritize for you. All right, have a great week full of priorities and full of getting shit done. All right. Cheers.